Hey, it's Neil with Western Canadian Rockwell. We're back again. Today we're going to talk about flipping the differential on a two and a half ton axle. Um, as you can see, we've got an old steer axle mocked up here on the forklift. The reason why you might want to flip your chunk, basically pick it up, turn it 180, set it back down, is that as you can see, you have a short side, long side tube, and the pinion is offset quite a bit. What you can do by flipping that around is it moves the pinion, offsets it and kind of centers it better in the axle. Works good if you're running a drop box or if it's as a rear steer setup and you want to center your drive line to the T-case. That's what a lot of people do. What we're going to go over is a product that we offer to help you do that. <clears throat> the reason why you might like to purchase that product. And then we're going to go into a little more detail on things that you got to watch for when you're flipping these. So there are a couple issues that you'll run into if you go to rotate this center chunk 180 degrees. Uh, one thing you don't have to worry about is that if you do flip it, uh, the differential will still drive forward. What it doesn't do is it doesn't create any, um, it doesn't create your differential to drive in reverse or nothing. The way the two and a half tons are set up is that no matter which way this is facing, it will still drive the differential forward. So you can rest easy, you don't have to worry about that. The issue is that this ring of bolts here isn't symmetrical. So this half here isn't symmetrical to this half. So when you go to move it around, a bunch of these bolts won't line up. So we're gonna show you the little kit that we got put together that helps fix that problem. And there's two options. We'll show you both of those options. Okay, so this is our first product. This is the first option that you get. And what this is, is a drill jig. What it allows you to do is it bolts on to the bottom of the differential and it gives you a template for drilling out this differential. Helps line up your drill bits exactly where they need to be. Uh, keeps your drill nice and straight as you're drilling it. And then what that allows is it gives two sets of bolt holes in the differential. So that way you can either flip it one way, flip it 180, and the second set of bolt holes will line up in both directions. And that's what this is for. This is our second option. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to drill and tap the housing. And sort of the benefit behind that is it's a little bit more work, but if you ever run into a situation that if you're at an event or a race, you pile up a chunk real bad, like beyond repair, it'll allow you to just grab any old stock military chunk and it'll bolt right into your housing. You won't have to re-drill the holes to fit your application, which is kind of nice, especially if you're in a rush. Um, it is a little bit more work, so we do have a video online, you can check it out. It goes into all the details about using this uh, flip jig. And basically what it does is it uses these four holes, this plate, what it'll do is it'll bolt on here. So it bolts on, and then if you like, it allows you to drill these holes with a nice steady straight uh, jig to make sure everything lines up perfectly and then it allows you to tap each hole, move your studs into the new hole, and then drop the chunk in in the proper direction. Uh, it's also marked, you can see here, we etch it with the drill bit size and the tap size that you'll need. And as I mentioned, there is a detailed video online that we've posted that shows you how to do this uh, properly. So. Okay, now we're gonna get into a little more detail on a couple things, a couple important things you have to watch when you're rotating these differentials back and forth, and especially when you're installing rear axles, because as I mentioned, it doesn't matter which side of the flange you drive off of on these axles, it'll still drive forward. It, it doesn't matter if you're driving off this flange or this flange, if it's rotated 180 degrees, it doesn't matter. Especially a rear axle, it really doesn't matter which way you install that in a vehicle, except for <clears throat> one key detail. So the key detail that I wanted to point out when installing these two and a half ton axles under a vehicle is that the pinion gear here always faces the back of the vehicle. So if this is a front axle, your drive shaft is hooked to this flange. If it's a rear axle, the drive shaft is hooked to this flange. And the reason behind that is because most automotive gear sets, so a ring and pinion, it's got two different angles on the ring gear. So you can see here, this angle is a lot less steep 
than this angle. And what that is, is it's a, called a drive side. The drive side is here, the steep side, and the coast side of the gear. And what the problem is, is that if you drive, so under power, off this coast side, the angle puts a lot more stress into this gear and it becomes a lot more susceptible to damage. If you drive off the actual drive side, the way that it was designed, the gear is a lot stronger in that configuration. The problem that I've seen with these is that in uh, stock form, there's never really too many issues, like the gear sets are strong enough that you'll break uh, axle shafts long, with time, long before you fail a good set of gears. The problem is when you run aftermarket oversized axle shafts, you start getting into high horsepower, these gear sets become the next weak point, especially if you're driving on the wrong side of the gear. So always kind of keep that in mind when you're installing these in a vehicle. Um, okay, so a couple key identifiers to tell which side of the axle is the back side is in factory form, the two and a half ton steer has the tie rod behind the axle. Um, the rear axle, it's a little harder to, to differentiate because the whole thing is kind of symmetrical left to right, front to back. The one main difference though is the fill plug on the axle housing it's always going to be, need to be to the rear of the axle. Same with the steer. So if somebody's flipped the knuckles left to right, moved the tie rod to the front, the drain plug should still be on the back. But keep in mind, that's only if the differential hasn't been drilled and flipped. So if you wanna be 100% certain that you've got the pinion gear in the correct orientation, you pretty much have to pop off this little rectangle cover up top here and have a look. We just stepped outside for a minute. Uh, this video is about the two and a half tons. We're gonna to touch on the five tons here quick just because I'm gonna get a lot of questions on it. The five ton chunks, they do not need to be drilled. The, bolt, the bolts that hold the differential to the housing are symmetrical. So you can pick it up, turn it 180, drop it back down, and you don't have to change anything. The other thing too, to mention about the big bearing and the small bearing is on a five ton, the big bearing is easy to tell. It has uh, eight half inch bolts on the big bearing side <clears throat> and it has small three eighths uh, bolts on the small bearing side. So you can tell from the outside without pulling the top cover. And the big difference is that on a five ton, it's backwards from a two and a half ton where the big bearing always has to be on the front versus in the rear, like a two and a half ton. The thing I should mention though, is that the five tons are so massive that there's very few instances where I've seen ring and pinions fail on these things. And <clears throat> I haven't seen a lot of guys, I know there is bigger axle shafts out there, but they're not as common as guys running them in the two and a half tons. So if you have the small bearing up front, it's not really a deal breaker, but it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you'd like to purchase one of these uh, drill templates that we sell, you can purchase them online or you can give us a call or message us, email, we're on all the socials. So just shoot us a message if you've got any questions and we'll be happy to help you. Thanks.